East, southeast. East, southeast. Yes? Captain von Hoesen speaking. The other side of the river entrance. We'll anchor of Mapola in an hour. Thank you, Captain. the jungle for the trees. <coughs> Why, Miss Cordup, Charles? <coughs> Why? Oh, he'll expect it. He, he's very proud of Africa. <laughs> Does he own that, too? <laughs> Hello, Charles? Oh, yes, my darling. I'll try to call you. Uh, we'll anchor a Mapola before dinner. But meanwhile... Yes, but, but I'm not dressed. No, dear. Well, uh, Faye's here. Uh -huh. All right, darling. Goodbye. You don't mean a word of it. Not a single solitary word. I didn't say anything. Your voice did. Your voice said you loved him. That's what I wanted it to say. You don't love his nibs, Linda. You may kid him. You may even kid yourself. But you can't fool me. I'll be very happy with him. And I'll make him happy, too. What about uh, Bill Jeffrey? Bill was tempest and turmoil. Charles is peace and security. He has an office and a home, not an airplane. And a yacht. And a chateau. All right, so he means luxury, too. Well, maybe he's just not my type. He scares me. Every time he, uh, I jump. <laughs> he may know as much a thing as me. He asks me, even though he doesn't have to. Bill always told you what to do, and you did it. You love Bill. Bill told me he was going to fly down to Spain. Just to look around, he said. He told me to wait for him. And I did. But one day I received a copper box neatly labeled. The ashes of William Jeffrey, killed in action. I'm through with ashes, say. I, I've i earned peace and security. I, and I'll make Charles a good wife to get it. If and when he asks you, which he won't. Why not? Why does any man ask a woman to marry him? Well, I suppose he's afraid somebody will beat him to it if he doesn't. There's your answer. There hasn't been anybody else. Not since I've known Charles. And there won't be. Not while you wear that big sign. No poaching, private property, signed Charles de Corland. There was a man in Paris last night. One of the richest and most powerful men on the continent. Maybe you're right. I guess he read that sign. You should have stayed home. Made him wonder. Who knows, you might have found someone who couldn't read. <laughs> Oh, darling. How quickly it gets dark here. <laughs> there is no twilight in Africa. I think I'm going to like your dark at death. So beautiful at night, so warm and silent. You're going to like it in the daytime, too. It's primitive. You will like it. At midday in the jungle, there is not a sound. The world seems hardly to have begun. Sometimes it rains, then comes the quiet of the dripping forest. Everything is green. Mm -hmm. Green's a good color for me. Oh, come on with me on safari, Linda. All your life you will remember it. I have three weeks away from pressure and work. I would miss you terribly if you did not come with me. You never had a chance to miss me, Charles, have you? Maybe that's a good idea. I won't go with you. I'll be here when you come back. Oh. You see, I want to be missed. Don't look now, but we're being boarded by pirates. The port officials. Excuse me, dear. How are you, Captain? I'm Jock McPhail, Young's Doc Phillips. How are you, Doctor? How do you do, sir? I want you to meet the owner. Baron de Coran, may I present Dr. McPhail and Mr. Phillips? You have your master's twisted, mister. Young's Doc Phillips, I'm Jock McPhail. Oh, the agent. I wrote about my safari. Uh, uh, Captain, the doctor would want to examine the crew. We have no sickness aboard. Uh, shall we go aft? Quite a canoe you have here. <laughs> Miss Stewart, Miss Thorne, Mr. I'm sorry, you? your name escapes me. McPhail, Jock McPhail, how are you, lassie? Do you want you to die? <sighs> Thank you. There's no a hard name to remember? No. This will be your first visit to Africa, Ned Duke? Ned Duke. 
You no care for it, I'm thinking. A little drink, Mr. McPhail? Oh, didn't mind a wee drappy. I'm afraid I haven't given you much time to make the arrangement. There was no only confusion in my mind. You said you wanted the best hunter in West Africa and the best job. Why, why didn't he come aboard? I will in the first place. He's knowing my polar than you. Perfume. <laughs> but I wrote you I wanted to start on the 17th. My time is limited. You know, fast yourself. The 17th is not till tomorrow. The day is my birthday. Congratulations, but what has that to do with my hunter? That means Jim Logan will be here to celebrate with me tonight. Are you sure? I gave you my personal guarantee. Do you come, Jim Logan? No. I didn't mind if I do. Get a health last day. You, man. <laughs> Thank you. Ambrosia. Oh, Decent dinner. Oh, sure. Tonight we got mutton, as usual. Well, tonight we're not going to have mutton, as usual. Now, because underneath that mountain of fat, you must have a heart. And if necessary, you'll cook that tonight. <laughs> it's going to be very tough. <laughs> now it's Jock's birthday. Maybe the last one we'll be able to celebrate together. We're going to celebrate it like gentlemen. Are these the dice you made out of that tusk? Yes, that's that rogue elephant that you killed. Always brought me a lot of luck these days. Thank you. Well, I'll take that table there with flowers on it, and uh, I want a tablecloth for Jock. Oh, sure, tablecloth. <laughs> there don't be a tablecloth between here and Palma. Well, take the sheet off your bed and wash it and iron it. All right, as you wish. And, um, I want champagne. Oh, you must be joking. We got beer and whiskey. Here. Take this. Clean it up. Get, uh, cork and wire. But it's empty. I'll put some white wine in it and some soda water. And brandy to give it some body. But to make it cold, we don't got no ice. Stick it in the river. Aha. <laughs> it says salmon, but it's lying. No, it's not salmon. Now, well, tonight it's going to be trout. For Jock McPhail, it'll be trout from Loch Lomond. Aye. For Jock, I want the works. And for Jock, I want you to put on a decent shirt. And dinner at nine, monsieur. All right. Yep. That's still salmon. Check your heel and fingers off the pipes of Scotland, you blasted foreigner. Oh, wait a minute, Jocko. I gave those orders in your honor. Jim Laddie, <laughs> your back is as full you'd be. Play on, Mike, as a special occasion. Come inside, Laddie. We'll have a sniff. All right. I might say we'll have a snorter. <laughs> Sustain your wind, man. It's a purple thing to admit that the black Oscar plays the pipes better than I do. <laughs> And he's yet to see his first sprig of heather. Uh, his head on your chest, Jim uh -huh. How will you have it? Off and off. Two fingers. Did you have a good trip? Well, my people like it. Uh, You'll be glad to know you're off again the more. Now what? 
You should see the boat they come in. Bigger than the Queen Mary. 300 pounds for your purse, lad. And maybe a wee bit more when I up at the price on the rich man. So you made all arrangements, eh? I, I did. Well, that's just dandy. All you have to do now is get out of them. Oh, no, Johnny. You wouldn't have make me break my word. That's a better thing for a Presbyterian. No, that's your problem, Jocko. I told you five weeks ago when I left that was going to be my last affairs. There's trouble in Europe. I've been reading the papers. Ah, wish there has not any war been declared. There's no trouble, only tension. Why must you be so stubborn? You have already one bullet in your body to do? <laughs> no, Jocko, I'm taking the next boat north. You're a better hard man, Jim Logan, to ruin an old man's birthday. Don't pull any of that pathetic stuff on me, Jock. I'm on all your tricks. So what will I tell the Baron? Tell him anything. Tell him it was your birthday. Tell him I got powerful drunk. All of which, my dear friend, will undoubtedly be true. Happy birthday, old man! Oh. oh, well, I know that what I'm about to enjoy is the time of my young life. And I want to say here and new, before I pitch forward on my face as drunk as a laird on his wooden. <laughs> that from the bottom of my heart, I thank you, Jim Laddie. I thank you. <laughs> Oh, sir, yes. I haven't seen sick a thing in my pool. <laughs> <laughs> and now, my good man, what do you suggest for dinner? The chef suggests la clomen trout à bon blanc. Uh -huh. And uh, champagne? Champagne, trout, are you daft? Trout and champagne. Uh -huh. I think 1906. Not one of the best years, but um, adequate. <laughs> the ice, she was a little bit warm. <laughs> well, happy birthday, Jock. Thank you, Jim Laddie. Good hunting. <laughs> Man alive, you even remember the pipes. <laughs> Piper, will you join us in a drink? I you will, and thank you. Tis a braw nick to, and a glass of wine is a braw thing to warm a man's gin. <laughs> <laughs> Good lad. Here you are. <laughs> well, Mike. <laughs> well, all I can say is I, I have been to war, and I have loved a woman. And I have been to Paris, too. I have even been the recipient of an illuminated address. But never did I think that I would ever live long enough for anything like this to happen to me. <laughs> Four three, please. Oh, I am too sorry. The place is full up. If you don't mind waiting for a few minutes. Well, it is my fault. I neglected to make a reservation. Well, give this to that native and tell him to clear out. Oh, no. He is part of the celebration. What? This is a very special occasion. Of course it is. It is the lady's first trip to Africa. <laughs> Here, come on, boy. Clear out. Drink us whiskey in clean glasses. Clean. No, no, wait, Jim Laddie. Young goes 300 pound. Here, Mike, give me this. I think this is yours. Excuse me. Come on, Piper, have a drink with us. Right. Welcome to Mopolo. Here, sit down and have a drink. No, they've got no respect for the McPhail Tartan over there. 
Aye, Shadoon, man. Don't stand there like some heathen foreigner. For the new year, a Scot. You're running a kilt of the heathen. You'll have to walk backwards. You have your sporing in the rear. <laughs> there you are. Two whiskey. Thank you. Glasses are especially clean. Yeah. For to play games. Oh, who is that young man? Oh, that's Mr. Jim Locke. The hunter? Oh, yes. That's very funny. Tell him I want to see him. Yes. What are you going to do? Just give him his orders for the morning. Well, fair break my heart to see you kiss 300 pounds goodbye. Mr. Logan, that gentleman wants to see you. Well, I'm here. Ah, gentlemen, for once be civil. It would do no harm to walk over to his table. It is only common politeness. I wouldn't walk over to his oh. table if... Jim, lad, you wouldn't ruin an old man's birthday. Jack. I'll go with you. We'll have a drink with you at no added expense to us. <clears throat> All right, Jacko. Let's go and meet his high and mightiness. Eh? Uh, good evening, Baron. Good evening. Ladies, this is Jam Logan, the man I was telling you about. Thank you. Good evening. He'll take you on safari. I'm afraid he's mistaken, Baron. You'll have to get somebody else. I always make such decisions myself. So do I. I'm told you are the best. I contracted for the best. Well, won't you sit down and at least join us for a drink? Uh, thank you, Baron, thank you. Uh, pull up a chair, laddie. Sit here. Please, of course. Drinks for the gentleman. I wonder if you can read. What? Fine, the poaching side. Uh, well, no, this is awful snug. Awful snug. You know, you're quite a surprise to me. I expect you to see a bearded giant covered with guns and pelts and things, instead of which you show up in a black tie. Black tie, white hands, and mildew. <laughs> eh, the beast is afraid my coat practically to the point of embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> Your friend tells me you're an American. Yes, Greeks. Uh huh. You're a long way from home, aren't you? Yes, I'm a weak man, and I fell under an evil influence. Pay him no heed, Baron. He's a contentious man and likes to hear himself. <laughs> you're no doing so badly yourself. If you'll forgive me, ma'am, your English is atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> Should you forget your acquaintance? Oh, oh, you better oh, take oh, it. Oh, 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 Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. This is the nick of time. You'll join me in a slice, I hope. Mm. <laughs> 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 Those dice are pure ivory, Baron. And if Jim Logan hadn't been a hunter of years, I'd have been a dead man this day. The elephant had me cornered. And I warn you, Jim Logan kind of lose rolling those dice. Is that true? Well, oh, they haven't let me down yet. Will you take a sporting chance? Will you let the dice decide whether you take Charles on safari or not? Aren't you going? Do you still want me to, Charles? But of course not. It would give me the greatest pleasure. All right. And I'll roll your dice to decide. But you will go win or lose? Win or lose. How about you? Well, up to now, when I lose, I, I lose. I hadn't thought about that. Say, what would be a fair stake? A pair of dark glasses to keep him from reading signs. Um, the best rifle that you can buy, Mr. Logan. What about that? Go on, Jim Letty. It is a sporting thing to do. You can't refuse a lady. Well, since I can't lose. All right. You roll. I warned you. Twelve. Mm. Mom, dear, another twelve. And she didn't have time to load them. You roll again. Right. Hey, well, that ought to stand up. Oh, uh, didn't it fail me, new lassie? My heart's fair fluttering. Here we go. What is it? I don't look. Nine. Ah, he's met his match. Madam, I misjudged you. It's a safari for you, Jim Lady, and a taste of the jungle for you, my lady. Baron, I'll start loading your equipment tomorrow morning. <laughs> Make your black rascal music! Ammunition, shotgun. Yeah, we'll go. Ammunition, shotgun. 
Manchester cotton, red and green. Manchester cotton, red and green. Four dozen cotton umbrellas, pink and yellow. Umbrella, pink and yellow. One dozen Mildred military coats, red. Mildred coats, red, one dollar. One gross glass bead. Glass beads, one gross. Who's your hopper? Six dozen men, red flannel drawers. Six dozen men, red flannel drawers. And the ladies go for thee. Hey, Jim. Jim, laddie. Here come your fancy friends from the weed thing. Here, hold Well, I'm ready to shove off whenever you are. Good morning, Baron. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is my boy, Wimber. He'll show you your quarters. I have your boxes stowed. Uh, some personal luggage. Wait, wait. I didn't see you. Put your hat on, Miss. Uh... Sorry, I forgot your name. Linda Stewart's the name. Well, it was too nice a name to put on a gravestone. Keep your hat on. You know, blondes are allergic to the sun. Show them up. You sure you won't come along? Never been so happy about not going to any place in my life. I'm allergic to jungle. <laughs> One dozen brown derbies. Bowlers, Mickey, bowlers. How are you, ladies? Hello. Twelve gallons of Dutch gin. You take the Dutch gin, and I'll take the slow gin, and I'll be in drum party for you. One gross for hand marriage. Ah, vanity, they name as well. Yes, yes, ma'am, sir. I fix to find what you want. You fit to see? Uh, oh. What kind of double talk is that? I expect he means wait and see. <laughs> oh, call it quits, Linda. This is no trip for a woman. It'll be hot. Dirty. You may get sick. Something might bite you. For instance, any of those wild biting things, you know. Mosquitoes, lions, elephants. Do elephants bite? Oh, call it off. Listen, I couldn't get out of it now if I wanted to. Rubbish. Charles will forgive you. Yes, but not after rolling the dice with Logan. Don't you worry about that, young man. He can look after himself. And don't you worry about me. Say, what are you going to do? The captain's a bra bonny man. And a confound bachelor to boot. I'll be in heaven. And you'll be in the interior of Africa if you don't go ashore. Oh, my, let me out here. You all right? Yes, I, I guess so. Good. Take good care of the store, Mike. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Goodbye, Mr. McPhail. Goodbye, Lassie. Goodbye. No credit, mine. And show me a good profit, too. Yes, sir. I'll take care of heaving this neck on my bare hand. Yes, no water now. Can I fix the full whistle? All right, Admiral. Let her go. Yes, Warner. Here we blow. my trading post. I have goods to sell. Uh, I expect you would fool those natives into buying anything. Uh, well, it's true. They're very easy to sell because they have not only idea of money. On the other hand, they're very hard to sell, too, because they don't need anything. <laughs> <laughs> you had your quinine this morning? Well, I know I didn't think it was necessary. Well, go take it. Five grams. Take it every morning. Hey, wait a minute. You can't... All right, Jim. Mr. Logan, you can call me Jim, too, Baron. Thank you. I will make one thing clear. While I appreciate that your position with me has no relation to that of a servant... I appreciate that, too, Baron. Yes, but our point is you will restrict yourself to such orders as concern the safari. I intend to. You just now ordered Miss Stewart to take quinine. A woman down with fever distracts from the hunting. Have you taken yours? No, but I've been to the... Well, then I suggest that you do. All right, Mr. Logan, but remember, I am paying for this safari. Uh, it's a good beginning, Jim Levy. 
can be only one leader on Suhari. I ken the lassies uh, bonny enough to be Scottish. Hey? Hey? I didn't say anything. I know. But what do you say? Well, she's um, nice and clean. Hey, uh, that she is. That she is. <laughs> you gummer. <laughs> Man, dear, but this is snug. I'm grateful to you, Baron, for having Jim here to play cribbage with me the night. Is this no better than running up north hunting a war? War? There is no war. Ah, no, there will be. The world's not going to sit on a hot stove forever without something boiling over you. You seem to be better informed than I. If that were true, I hardly would be on a hunting trip. Hey, yeah, and I make no doubt the Baron's information comes directly for the feed box. But even if there were a war, you're an American, there's no reason for you to go. America is a long way for China, too, Lassie. And he managed to find that game. But why? I wanted to. Oh. Bugle call fever? Pull off the clamp. I'll show you. Santé, You fix it. Come on, Aunt Deck, Linda. I will show you how magnificent an African night can be. Hey, you'll enjoy that fine, I'm thinking. And I'm thinking you'll be enjoying your cribbage. It's a sad thing, it's a two-handed game. <laughs> he'll be introducing her to the mysteries of the mosquito, I make no doubt. My crib, Jim Letty, have at you. Do they always moor at night? It is unsafe for navigation. The river changes course sometimes. Oh, look, Charles, a new moon. Make a wish. The moonlight will be beautiful when we reach the high plateau for us to share. Thirty-one for five. Oh, if you could see through that darkness now, darling, there would be red sand, and beyond that, the barrier of mangroves. Uh... Fifteen checks and two of them for the black and killer. Is it necessary to shout your way through that game? One of three. No more. No more? I'll skunk you. Skeeter. You must have let one in the door. Wait till the stabbing little devil see them in the night. When we reach the high plateau, you will always remember the lightning flashing and the pound of the tum tum. You and I. Oh, oh you startled me. <laughs> There's nothing but the mosquito. <laughs> Go on, Tom. Once we leave the river, we will climb to the most romantic. Mm. Well, I'm afraid these mosquitoes are not very romantic. Oh. Mosquitoes bothering you? Maybe this will help. Mr. Logan, will you please? No, you, Charles. These mosquitoes are too much, even for you. Yeah, this hot weather brings them out at night. Yes, and drive me in. I'm going to bed. Good night. Good night. Here to your cabin. Uh, yes? I'm going to turn in. Oh. I just want to make sure your mosquito netting was sound. Oh, I can handle it all right. Yes, but it's a little difficult until you get the swing of it. Do you do this for everyone? <laughs> At first. You never know which mosquito's loaded. Loaded? Hmm, with fever. See, see my, my, my face is hot. Well, that's just from trying to tuck yourself in. Anything more I can do for you? No, thank you. Good night. Good night. Oh, Jim. Uh, not that it's any of my business, but what were you doing in China? Oh, I don't know, but it seemed a good idea at the time. Susie and I just blew in. Susie? Yes, you'll meet her when we get to the camp. Susie is my plane. Oh. So you're a flyer? Oh, after a fashion. I use the plane to spot game. And wars? Sometimes. 
If you hear any strange noises during the night, don't be afraid. They can't come aboard. They? Yes, the strange noises. Good night. Good night. Mm. And thank you for tucking me in. Oh. Don't miss it next time, Linda. Oh, look, look, there's another. Oh, but I don't wonder. What good will it do? Jump for the sport. Go ahead. Oh. I missed. You seem relieved. Not nearly so much as the crocodile. I'm sure he'd sooner lie there in the sun than be shot at. I'm afraid you haven't the instincts of a hunter. That's a good shot. <laughs> I'm not exactly an amateur. I told you it was a good hundred yards away. They make me shiver. <laughs> Especially if it's you they're circling over. Do they really eat human flesh? Oh, I've seen them pick a body clean in a few minutes. <laughs> I'm afraid Mr. Logan is trying to impress us, my dear. Africa is not as wild as that. That was in China, Baron. Oh, I see. You were fighting there? You must have needed a job very badly. No, I, I didn't get paid for it. Then why did you do it? <laughs> Well, that's, uh, that's hard to say unless someone hands you a soapbox. I've known men like you. Somewhere someone blows a bugle and off you go into death and destruction. Never thinking for a moment you may die yourself or that those who love you are dying with you. To you it's just an exciting game where you can play hero, shattering peace and security Sometimes forever. you have to fight for just those very things. Maybe that's your answer. My answer to what? What I was doing in China. You see, I learned something that a lot of people don't learn until it's too late. I learned it overnight in a little village near Vienna. One day we were all sitting around, being happy and gay, just having fun. The next day a shadow fell across us and we didn't laugh anymore. We spoke in whispers. Now, I don't like speaking in whispers, Baron. So I learned that liberty isn't just a word. It's a tangible living thing to use or to lose. It's as real as a loaf of bread. Liberty's something you've got to fight for right on through generations. There you go again, tucking about fighting. A man can't curl up for a wee bit snow with you, you yammering and passion. Hey, what's got into them? Just a minute. The boys know they're nearing home. They've sent word ahead. Answered. We'll be in by dark. Mr. McPhail, I wish you told me to dress. I always drum up a wee bit trade. Wearing things like this. If I'm wearing them, they want them. Somebody. Somebody? Somebody. Jumbo. Yeah, you know, Mr. Chief, Lassie, we six wives. Goma, Maradadi, Sana. The chief is my easy Aussie. I treated them that opera hat for a tusk of ivory. They didn't want the ivory and I didn't want the hat. Everybody was happy. <laughs> uh, the wee laddie behind him there with the leopard skin is a secret lair. Una na nefa, Sahiri. A fetish man. Every village has one. Chief, uh, these are our friends. Igwa. Uh, Abuze. Thank you. And this is 
No cannibal dinner tonight. How can we thank you? I'll show you. Chief, your gifts are as welcome as the Russia game after the elephant grass has been fired. Wanna Makuba? Wanna Kajana? I thank you. Lady like I In English, Mimsabu Blonde. Blonde? <laughs> you catch on quickly, Chief. You, brunette. Me, brunette? <laughs> Chief likes you. He says he'll get his witch doctor to tell your fortune for you. That's something extra special. All right. Quinda and Dan? Hey, who said? Sir, I don't know, I see. Honey, to it, Dawa. Lady, you. Ingolobo. Any pokelo. Yo, 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 Taylor. Me wa lokolo. Tete Angobo. He said, "'Tis well you came on this trip, because on it you will find your heart's desire." Her words to that effect. Jerry. And he take you now, better. No. You find hunting good. First, leopard. Excellent. Talking about blood, no. I can't even think she's a cannibal. Homo, water, mugu. Tolobo, wello, ngobo. Bubu. That's not fair. We can't understand. It's nothing particular. I will, it's a bit hard to translate. But uh, in good old Presbyterian, he said you would pass through the valley of the shadow of death. But you would come through on ski. Ah, good, good morning. morning good morning, morning. Good morning, Good morning, Good morning. How are you, Baron? Very well, good morning. We should miss you, Mr. McPhail. Uh, that's kind of you, ma'am. But uh, there's a penny to be earned. These ladies go weak at the sight of my red flannel drawers. <laughs> <laughs> Will you be here when we get back? No, I'll be rid of my drawers today, and then I'll go back down the river to my pool. Good luck to you all. You take the boat back? Well, the boat is waiting for us. The boys are going to pull Jock back by canoe. Oh. Hey, and a very pretty sight it is to see you too, Lusher. Do you think I might take a picture of the chief? I'll find out for you. Sure, Tony. Mem Sabu not take a picture. Me uh. Hey, Lusher, he said you can have your picture if you'll give him your suit. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well... Uh, don't you think we'd better be going, Jim? Yes, I think. Yes. Uh, Goodbye, yeah. Chief. Uh, Good morning. Uh, yeah. Goodbye, Good morning. Goodbye, Lashie. Goodbye, Baron. Bye, Baron. Uh, Stay on board. Bye, Chief. Hurry. Fire up the door. Who's the fire? Who's the fire? Adam Siegel. Well, these are our camp boys. They stay here in the base camp all year round. And from left to right, there's Dopey, 
sleepy, bashful, dark, sneezy, happy, and <laughs> grumpy, the cook. <laughs> well, I'll choose happy. All right. Happy is your boy. Baron, you can have um, sleepy. He'll be your boy. Those are your quarters. And right next door is yours, Baron. Mm -hmm. There's the dining room, and mine is over there if you want me. Oh, I think I'll cool off with an alcohol rub. And I'm going to baptize my new collapsible bathtub. Good. All right, boys, you fix to make Buana and Lady comfortable, hmm? Do you want to? If you uh, have any trouble making yourselves understood, just draw pictures, use the sign language, or send for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, Nani Shinga. What? Have this six. Oh. Hello in there. Hello. How'd the fancy new bathtub work out? Well, just come in and see. <laughs> How do you expect to bathe in that thing? Well, Happy and I followed the directions, and this is what we got. It's an awful lot of trouble just to take a bath. <laughs> Happy, you fix lady with soap and towel, huh? Follow me. No, 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 I can manage, really, I can. Oh, yes? Come on. <laughs> All right, Wemba, water for lady. Thank you, Martin. There you are. You just go in, hang your robe on a hook, and I'll do the rest. Oh, it's a shower bath. Yes, what do you think? Well, I don't know. You just said, come on. I thought I was a bag rather blind. <laughs> Thank you. Are you ready? Shoot! You all ready, Wimble? Kairi. All right, let her go. Just enough for a soaping. Holler for the deluge. Wait a minute. All right. Let her go. <laughs> well, I've never had such service in my life. <laughs> Thank you, Ember. Thank you, Happy. Thank you, Jim. Well, Baron, join us in the shower. Thank you. I'm doing very well. Oh. Well, I just wanted to make you feel at home. May I come in, Linda? Come in, Charlie. I wanted to be sure you were comfortable. Yes, Jim showed me where everything was. Yes, I noticed. You do not find him presumptuous? Of course not, Charles. My collapsible bathtub collapsed and he offered me a shower. He offered me away. We are his guests. On the contrary, my dear. He is my employee. Charles, do you mind going away? I want to get dressed. Oh, of course not, my dear. Oh, we're managing all right, aren't we, Happy? Yes, Missy. Happy fix. Happy fix. How right you are. Twenty gallons, Buona. That's enough. Close her up. Stop the wheels. Bring my rifle, Wimba. Wimba put inside Tango tin box. Now, have I ever cracked up on you yet, Wimba? Look this way, please. Oh, what is it, a movie? Yes. Smile. Uh -huh. Aha. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you taking Susie for an airing? Yes, Wimbus really the nurse, but I take her out when he doesn't. I fly plane too? Yes, I taught him. Always good to have a spare around, you know. He's pretty good too. 
Where are you taking her? I'm going to try and spot some game. May I come too? Well, sure, why not? Hop in. We'll be back in time for dinner, Wemba. There's some goggles and a helmet inside, I think. There we are. Switch off. Switch off. Contact. Contact. Where is Miss Stewart? Where is the lady? In plane. Bamba? Yes, Buana. Did Miss Stewart go in the plane? She fly away with Buana Jean. You know fit to worry. Mim Saab okay with Buana. I'm glad to get that assurance. You know fit to worry. They back time for dinner. Come on, I'll get in some shooting before dark. Wanna wait, have to go get gun? That won't be necessary. I only want a guide. Oh, look, there's a good shot for you, straight ahead. What's that on his neck? Oh, there's a tick bird. Oh, look, look, zebra. There's a water hole right near here. I'll take you to it. You'll get some wonderful shots there. Wait a minute, I want to get my rifle. since you ran out of film? Uh, 
half an hour. Why the rewinding? Well, I knew you'd make a start back if I didn't have an excuse to stay. Oh. And it wasn't my fascinating company. No. That's what I thought. All right. I have been using you. You don't mind, do you? I don't know. What's the idea? You want to make him jealous? Well, it hasn't hurt you any. No, I don't like it. I don't use traps in my business. Well, I haven't asked you to do any trapping or anything else. You made a swell decoy out of me. Look, you've done a lot of fancy talking. Fine words about liberty and freedom. Well, I'm after freedom, too. Freedom in chinchilla. Oh, chinchilla, nothing. You've done pretty well for yourself. I have. And by myself, alone. Look, you know what you want pretty clearly, don't you? Well, I know what I want, too. And I don't see it's any crime to want the kind of things that Charles represents. Oh, I don't know why I'm explaining myself to you. I don't either. Come well, on, let's go. It's late. Don't forget your alibi. Welcome, Buana. Happy no come back? I came past the field. The plane isn't back yet. Buona Jim and Saba back time for dinner. Happy come along by and by? He went after the leopard I shot. Leopard, Buona? You shoot leopard? Yes, what of it? We're happy now. I haven't the slightest idea. When you hear the aeroplane, tell me. Are those storm clouds? Yes, Buona. Better Buona Jim here. No good. No good. You can even go silent on me. From here in, I'm just the innocent bystander. There's one more question. Haven't I told all? Suppose I'd been in love with you myself. Why, that's absurd. Oh, don't worry, I'm not. <laughs> but suppose you'd have been playing two dirty tricks instead of one. How tough are you? Would you have gone ahead? Is that what you think? Oh, I'm just asking. All right, that's how it is. Let's go. It's starting to rain, and anyway, it's getting dark. Yeah, I remember I told you it got dark suddenly. Remember? Come on, let's go. Here, you may need this. Take off, or we'll never get back. That's right. What are you doing? Hyenas like rubber. I'd eat the tires off the wheels if I didn't put this thorn bush around them. Yes, but, but how can we take off if you've got that stuff in front of the wheel? We're not going to. Susie means much too much to me to start off this late. And in this rain, we'd land in a pitch dark downpour. Yes, but Charles will never... You wanted to make him jealous, didn't you? <laughs> well, he'd be twice as jealous if we don't get back until morning. Morning? But we said we'd get back. Charles will... I'm not worried about Charles. I'm worrying about Susie. The only chinchilla I have. Now, you stay put while I scout around for a place for us to sleep. This is too open for us to spend the night in, you know. Hyenas are awful gossips. You want more? No, thank you. Why do they keep on coming? For half. Half that infernal drumming! Wemba, what is the matter? Let me know, come back. Neither has Miss Stewart or your master. Wanna Jim, Pitch. Wanna Jim, Mimsaba, okay. Wanna Jim, have gun. Happy no have gun, happy no come back. Maybe happy hear drums, he come back. Amazing thing. It's called a silk cotton. 
tree. Hollow. Makes a natural chimney. I suppose years ago, lightning struck it and burned it out. Sit down, make yourself comfortable. We need some more wood on the fire. You were asleep. I can't sleep. Hello, hyenas. Mm -hmm. Talk to me for a minute, will you? It's better when I hear you talking. Better than the hyenas? What will I talk about? I was wondering. You're up here alone a lot, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Don't you ever get lonely? Mm-hmm. It's a pretty unnatural life, isn't it? No women? No, millions of them. Very attractive, too. Except for the rings through their noses. I mean civilized women. Oh, well. Have you ever been in love? Mm-hmm. Once. It was a very unconventional love affair. You see, she was married. Only knew her about 20 minutes. I never even knew her name. Sometimes I wonder if it was peach blossom or lotus flower or... Was she Chinese? I mean... Uh-huh. Yes, we met in a very unconventional place at a very unconventional time. It was in a shell hole. She and her husband and I. The attack was on, so I just said hello. Looked away from her gun long enough to welcome me. Wasn't much time to say anything more. They plugged me first. Then they got her husband through the head. When he dropped, there was no weeping. I just looked down at him. And then down the sight of her gun. She was quite a gal. Quite a gal. And what happened to her? When I came to, it was quiet. She was lying there beside her husband. As dead as he was. Jim, I, I'm terribly sorry I got you into this. Well, it's all right. If you love the guy, I don't blame you. Charles. Had quite an adventure. I imagine as much. What have you to say for yourself? Well, first it was too rainy, second it was too dark, third Susie was too valuable for me to risk a takeoff, and fourth, um, I have nothing to say. To risk a takeoff? Why did you land? Oh, I asked him to. I wanted to take some pictures. Take some pictures at night? Oh, Charles, you're making me feel like a schoolgirl who's played hooky. Want to see him? What is it, Wimble? Wanted to hear him by his son. And the watcher happened to chew it. Did you shoot a leopard yesterday? Yes, I did. A long shot, at least 200 meters. He ran into the brush. Didn't you go after him? Didn't you make the kill? I was more concerned with Stuart's safety at the moment. The boy ran after him. 
Excuse me if I seem to break up the party, Linda, but I've got to go after one of my boys. Wemba, get a couple of men and some guns. There they are. Shot him by. Come on. Hey. I'm a Cooper. Happy room, Gomu. Oh. Well, happy finished your job for you, Baron. Peleka Hamani. So, Mama, there's your leopard. I hope it's worth it to you. Jim, I'm so sorry. Poor little Happy. He was so sweet. Last thing he said to me was, Happy fish. Didn't work out quite that way, did it? Linda. Oh, why did you let him go in after that leopard? The pelt meant nothing to me. Before I knew that little fool started running after it. That was his job, Baron. Yours was to make the kill. You said you're not an amateur, and yet you let a wounded animal escape. Don't dramatize it. I'll pay an indemnity to his family. I was his family, Baron. And your biggest check wouldn't pay for the life of one of my boys. Have you finished? For the moment. I spotted your elephants yesterday. What are your orders? The elephants can wait. Last night, I heard lions nearby. We'll get one. Okay, I'll take you myself. The boys will want to give Happy a send-off. When you are ready. I'm just going to take a shower and change first, if I may. Hmm. Charles, may I come along? Of course, my dear. I want you to. Come in. Jim, I, I wanted to tell you how terribly sorry I am about Happy. That's all right. The boys are used to danger. I suppose they all halfway expect to end up like Happy did. Guess it wouldn't have happened had I been here. I know. Do you really have to go out after lions today? Why, have you any new plans? Any more chestnuts to pull out of the fire? Oh, forget yesterday. That's over. Right or wrong, you've made up your mind about me. There's no need for silent warfare. You've got me wrong, young lady. The innocent bystander, that's me. Are you ready, Logan? Miss Stewart is coming, too. Coming? You never miss a trick, do you? Here, have a gun. Well, I thought Miss Stewart coming along would be a surprise to you. Did you? Mm. Jim was lending me one of his guns. Uh, that reminds me, I'd better check yours, Baron. I have already. Nevertheless, I'll check it. I shall try to be as expert as you next time. Good. There's his track, all right. Headed that way, come on. Keep behind me, the wind is changing. You ought to be off in there somewhere. Your shot, Baron. Keep your eye on that brush. There he is, look. Take your time, Baron. Try and get him just behind the ear. Did 
Did you get him? I'm not sure. You hit him all right, in the shoulder. I must be nervous. Yeah, too nervous for good shooting. I was less than 60 yards away. Wait here. Jim, stop it! Jim! Jim! He may be killed like Happy. Don't be a fool. He knows what he's doing. Boys will bring him in. That'll be your last lion, Baron. Come on. Better go quick, Buana. See Dr. Man in Mopola. Muscle him torn bad. Can I be of any assistance? Is there anything I can do to help? Nothing, thanks. You'd better go. This can't be very pretty to watch. He's right. Come on, my dear. Uh, and incidentally, goodbye. My fee does not include losing an arm through infection. Wemble will fly me to Mapola. The boys will take you to the boat. You mean you're going now? Uh-huh. Goodbye. Come on, my dear. Oh, uh, just a minute, Baron. I'd like a word with you. Excuse me. Yes? That was a pretty easy shot you missed. I was tired, nervous. I did not sleep last night. Mm. You know, there's not a very high price ticket on my life, Baron. And if it is to be used up quickly, it's not going to be to gratify your spleen. You missed that kill purposely. You were not forced to go in after the lion? No, but you knew I would. You wanted me to come out like Happy did, feet first. You have a great imagination, Mr. Logan. Oh, don't worry. You don't have to send to your lawyer. But why didn't you shoot me in the back? Surely missing the lion is a clumsy way of doing things. Have you finished with me? Yes, I'm glad to say. Oh. Definitely. Good. Get me my coat. Oh, no. Revolver. Not shoot. You play. Row you heathen. Row. How are you, mate? How are you? What's up with my thing? How's the storm? Hey. Hey. Hello. How are you, lassie? Everything all right? How's Linda? Whose plane was that? Jim Logan's plane, and I'm fair worried. Something's happened. Come, Lost. Well, all I say it ain't the scratch, it's the poison that's in him. Science has licked that if you're quick enough. Anti tetanus. I had a friend, Francois, got a monkey scratch from a little bitty monkey. But the poison went all through him. First he turns red, then he turns white like marble, then he turns blue. Oh, it was so beautiful, so patriotic. Red, white, and blue. I always say he died for friends, but my heart says it was a little scratch from the monkey. <laughs> You're a cheerful guy to have around. Just a hunter's home companion, that's what you are. See, you want some anisassi and some whiskey? Uh, no, thanks. No whiskey no. for you for no. a couple no, of days, no. Jim. Well, what's happened here? Hello, Jock. Hello, Hello Jocko. I just ran into a lion and tried to tickle him, and he wouldn't play. Will he be fine, Doc? What about Linda? Is she safe? They'll be here in a couple of days. 
They're coming down by the riverboat. But they're all right. Oh, yes, they're fine. Better go easy for a little while, Jim. Give that serum a chance to work. Are we here, Gomorrah? What happened? Well, I'll tell you, Jock. The lion just didn't have any sense of humor. He wouldn't be ticked. Thank you, Jim Laddie, for relieving my mind. I was afraid you had an accident. Give me the whiskey. That's nice of you to sit there and let the doctor practice on you. Give me a glass. Well, Major. Fine day. You were saying, Jim Luddy? No, I wasn't. You've been a hunter for ten years. You've seen Molly a shot, miss. Eh? Hey. Eight. Fifteen, two. And every other time there's been a shot, miss, you've gone in and made the kill. With no damage to yourself. Twenty-five. Fifty-one for two. What was the matter with you, Jim Laddie? I was worried. Eh? About the four pounds you owe me from the last time we played cribbage. And if you don't watch your game, you're gonna lose a lot more. Eh, yeah. the lassie's bonny enough to be Scottish. Wanna? No, thank you. You didn't eat anything, darling. I'm not hungry. I think I'll go to bed if you'll excuse me. Linda. Oh, don't do that, Charles. Oh, I'm sorry, I did not think. What did you want? I wanted just to tell you how glad I am we are going back to the yacht tomorrow. I'm sorry now that I brought you here. I'm not. In a way, I'm glad I You came. can chart your own course. We are going to be Charles. arranged to Madeira to the Azores. I'm not coming back with you. But of course you are. You must not be absurd, Linda. We will be back where we were. We'll never be back where we were. We can't be. We're not the same people we were. Something has happened to both of us. Because of us, that poor boy Happy is dead. Because of us, Jim might have... Don't you realize it? I realize you have been very foolish. This fellow longer has completely... It's complete... nothing to do with him. This is between you and me. Oh, I know I'm to blame for all that's happened. I'll admit that I came on this safari only to make you jealous. And succeeded. That's why I can't blame you as I should. I'm not a child, Linda. When you came back after that night out, I suspected you were in love with him. When I wounded that lion, I proved it. I watched your face when Mr. Logan went to that brush. Wounded that lion? You did it deliberately. I wanted to know how things stood between you, and I found out. And he might have been killed. He is an experienced hunter. His safety was his concern, not mine. I was concerned with what I discovered about you. What you discovered about me, how brilliant you were, Charles. But you discovered something for me, too. I didn't realize I was in love with him until he went in after that lion. Oh, that is very touching, but you're not a woman for whom love will be enough. I'll never be that woman you again. You'll feel the same when we get back. My yacht is where you belong. My Charles, life is stop! Among... I told you I'm not coming back with you, good night. Oh, no, we are settling this now. I will not allow you to make a fool of yourself. There's nothing you can do about it. Let me put it this way. I will not allow you to make a fool of me. You are Logan. He didn't have anything you to do. You owe me too much. I will not permit you to make me ridiculous before my friends. Making love behind my back like some kitchen maid on her night out. Charles, get this through your head. I'm not one of your possessions. You haven't bought me. I'm flesh and blood. I'm free. Free to see you exactly as you are. You're not peace and security. You're it's cruelty and arrogance. You said enough. You'll be going to the boat to unload your store, isn't it, Dirk? You can wait.
Oh, hello, Mr. McPhail. How are you, Lassie? Where's Jim? Is he all right? I uh, really might be at the Simba Cafe, and he might be... Then he is all right. Uh, but your best chance of finding him is in the hammock on my porch. Right. Only didn't say a word that I told you. No. How are you, Baron? Very well. My boat isn't here. Will you please send your launch to my yacht and tell him to have my tender send ashore? I will wait in the cafe. Hey, three shakes of a dead lamb's tail. Could you have a... Here one. Take the wee launchie and go out to the Queen Mary and tell his nibs that the King of Ruritania wants to see him at the Simba Cafe We would fail immediately. Hello, Jim. Hello. Your arm, is it all right? Yes, thanks. Excuse me, I have some stores on the boat. Dumbo. Jim! Jim! Jim, I must speak to him. Oh, yes, I, I forgot to say goodbye, didn't I? Goodbye. He's topside, Lassie. Is this a game of hide and seek? You've got to listen to me. No? You don't make it easy. I'm sorry. I'm not going back with him. Did you hear? Yes, I heard. I'm sorry your plan fell through. I did my part. I suppose you have to be cruel to go about killing helpless animals. Yes, that's right. When people make them helpless, I have to be cruel and kill them. Oh, I don't blame you. I'm not asking anything of you. I only want you to forgive me. There's nothing to forgive. We're even. Don't you realize I'm trying to start all over again? That's all I'll have, a clear conscience and, and the thought that I never hurt anyone. Oh, but if, I, if I have, they forgive me. Well, if it matters, you're forgiven. Good luck. Yeah, well, you stubborn bottle. What have you done? Well, she asked me to forgive her. I did. Oh, aye, he forgives her. St. James himself. The holy man forgives the erring one. Uh, shut up. Get back upstairs, you glacket loony, before I bash you on the head with his darling. Aye, and I'm left-handed, too. Will you forgive me? Will you? Oh, Jim. Remember that first night on the boat? Do you really tuck everybody in like that? <laughs> Confidentially, no. I just had to have another look at... Anyone who could beat me with my own dice. Oh, that witch doctor was right. He said I'd get my heart's desire. <laughs>